All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a hot minute since I posted a um, vertical splitting video, probably well over 18 months. Uh, conditions in southeast Queensland have been that appalling for the last three years that I haven't been game uh, to split much at all in the last sort of you know year and a half. Um, but anyway, today we're going to split this um, tetragonular hogging's eye hive vertically. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so let's go. As I said earlier, it's been quite a while since I've split anything vertically, at least, well, split anything at all, actually. It's been at least 18 months. So we've got our empty box there, a full box here. Very heavy, full as a boot. Let's get into it. So I've taken the... Um, the little cover plates off the side of the hive here that cover the vertical join. The next thing we do is we cut across the viewing panel right in the middle of the hive. So just get our uh, straight edge here and our Stanley knife. And just cut across like that. Okay, it's the viewing panel cut. Next we grab our large thin blade filleting knife. Now you normally get quite a lot of resistance right on the very edges of the hive here. That's where they store a lot of resin and maybe some food and the cut will get considerably easier as you go through the middle of the brood. So we just go down. It's quite a lot of resistance there. Heaps of resistance. Oh. And then oh, you can see how easy the cut gets as you go across through the brood. And then a lot of resistance on the other side. Okay. So I've got kadaki resin on the knife, a little bit of honey, a little bit of pollen. So I'll just get the heel of the knife in the hive there and open him up. And here we go. Okay, so we've got a little bit of honey spillage. That's nothing unusual. I'll just turn these hives around here so you guys can see them. And we'll just grab this camera off the tripod. Okay. So this is one half here. Lovely and full. And here's the other half here. Beautiful. So we have at the moment our egg layer is down the bottom here. And then the separation between the advancing front and the retreating edge. And then we have all of our older brood up the top here. So this is all lava and pupa up the top and eggs down the bottom. Okay, so outstanding. All right, let's clean things up and box them up. All right, let's keep going. So, first thing we wanna do is drain any excess honey out of these halves. So this is the front half. This is the one I want to box up first. So just lay him down. I have a little sieve here off to the side with a uh, bowl underneath. get these bees out of this honey here. Oh. That's nicer than that shit you gave us the other day. <laughs> you try it. I've got crap on my hands. It's almost like oh, it's a beautiful. That's butterscotch, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's almost like a AA honey. Yeah, must be the environment and the flowers. Oh, that's bloody lovely, Alex. Yeah, I know. Do you want more of it before I wash it off? <laughs> oh, 
I'm assuming the plate was clean first. <laughs> Actually, what I'll do is I'll get, I'll put the empty back half in there first to drain. And I can clean this, this guy up in the meantime. So we get our wet rag. Clean that mating face. Beautiful. Clean up any remnants of any honey that's spilt. Pretty good. Get our empty back. It was about now. He knew he'd fucked up. Oh. God damn it. Uh. All right, guys, we are back. It is the next day. Oh, I can't believe I made that mistake. But anyway, I have returned and we have the correct empty box this time. Bushman's, the only product for me. All right. So, I have to open this hive again, obviously. Given that I cut, um, cut this hive in half yesterday, it'll be interesting to see what they've actually done to the cut face of the brood in both halves of the box. So it normally takes a day for them to clean up the cut face. And uh, in, all, in all honesty, you wouldn't even know it's been cut a day later. So um, let's whip these side covers off here and have a wee look. There's one. They don't seem too upset, so I'll use the drill. Don't use an impact driver. Using a drill is okay. You just go very gentle on them. Because you don't want to stir them up. Pull this tape off the join. Grab this knife again and put it in the heel of the hive. Hopefully it all just comes apart again. And it is. Okay. Oh my God, the heel's always cut. Outstanding. So as suspected, they've completely cleaned up the cut face of the brood. I'll just go and grab this phone off the tripod so you can see. <clears throat> So look at that, you wouldn't even know that that's been cut. Outstanding. So we'll have a quick look inside here and see if we can see a queen. It's going to be very difficult, but I'll be looking on top of this advancing front here. Uh, no, I can't really see inside there, but anyway, look, let's get them back together. Okay, let's keep going. So I want to get the, the empty front half back on as soon as I can. Well, I want to get it back on first. Okay. Get our cover plates. Okay. Put our lid on. Clips down and we'll get this guy straight back onto the star picket now to pick up all of these uh, foraging bees here. We are back. We'll do this front half now. 
which has got the empty back. And we are done. Oh. And put our lid on. Clips down. I'll go and put this guy back as well, and I shall bring this camera with me. So all of the bees that were hanging around this star picket here now have gone into this bottom hive here, which has got the empty front, okay? So I want more bees in this box here because the entrance is a bit more vulnerable than the established one up the top here. So that's pretty us, pretty much us done in a nutshell, guys. So um, hope you enjoyed that and I hope you can see that remembering that, that these hives here are actually Australis hives. They're only 2.6 litres in volume. Um, so you can see now that you do not need a big volume box to get good solid results. I mean, obviously, Hocking's Eye will go into a much bigger box. Um, particularly in North Queensland, you can have a box like 20 litres if you want. But in South East Queensland, with the highly variable weather, my Hocking's Eye seem to do, well, all my bees, seem to do uh, very well in a small box but like I said this is an Australis box we do have a dedicated tetragonular box which is 3.4 litres um, it's the same width and length as these guys here it's just a bit higher okay so um, and they, the bees go really great in those but anyway that's us one vertical split Hocking's eye I'll give you an update if anything remarkable happens but for now we're done Righto guys, that's it. Be good to yourselves.